The Beer O'Clock Show with Steve and Mark. Tanglefoot. Hello, it's Beer O'Clock and this is The Beer O'Clock Show where every week we take a select beer and taste, dissect and discuss its various merits while I, an ex-lager drinker, learn the subtleties of real ale. My name is Mark and joining me from the county with the oldest wooden church in the world is Steve. Hello Steve. Good evening Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing very well thank you. That, In case you're wondering that wooden church is Greenstead Church which was built in 1081 AD. Okay, and is that in Greenstead Green? By I've got any no idea. <laughs> because there, there is a Greenstead Green about two miles down the road from where I live. All right, is there an old wooden church there? I've no idea, I've never been there. <laughs> <laughs> Not the sort of place that I'd feel like going to. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it might be something I'll add to my bucket list now. Yeah. Visit Greenstead and find the oldest church in Essex. <laughs> Tip done. Uh, this week's featured beer is one from Badger called Tanglefoot, and we'll be getting to that in a little while. Meanwhile, we had some assignments last week, some personal assignments. Uh, mine was a Bishop's Farewell from the Oakham Brewery, if memory serves, and Steve's was Soul Bay Celebration Beer from Adnams. Now, Steve, I don't think you're over the moon about this one. No, I wasn't. I was a little surprised by it, to be honest with you. What 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 was the deal? Um, okay, well, the the Soul Bay Celebration beer is um, it's a big beer, um, so it's it's ten percent ABV. Um, it's in a seven hundred and fifty ml bottle, so so there's a lot of ten percent as as well. Um, and it's it's packaged as a celebratory sparkling beer, um, and essentially Adnams brew it using all of their residual yeast yep. from throughout the year. So um, and they then brew this special beer and, and they'll put it out every year. So it was it was done you know it was done out. It had proper cork top and everything. So um, I thought I'd, get, I'd give myself a, a try on that um, and. I wasn't exactly bowled over by it, if, if I'm honest. I, I found it, it was a little fizzy, um, but I think that there was a hint that it might have been in the title, in, in the fact that they called it Celebratory Sparkling Beer. <laughs> um, so I could, could yeah. have guessed that one, really. Um, but I found it, it had, it had some very bold flavours in it, but there were almost too many flavours in there. To, to really get to grips with what was going on. Do you think it's trying to beer. find its own identity and failing a little bit? I think so, yeah. I, I mean, there, there was a very a very yeasty taste coming through, but I, I, guess, I guess you'd get that, bearing in mind that they've, they've used their, their residual yeast. Um, but I just found I found the flavours just, just too big and bold and too overpowering and that there was just too much going on, to, as you say, to really find its identity. Mm-hmm. It, it did get better as as I went on but again I'm not sure whether that may well have been the effects of the 10% and the <laughs> 750 mils of it um, <laughs> but it certainly got easier to drink towards the end um, but I found it also had like quite a lot of these these special beers it had quite um, one, one of the things that did come through from it was it had quite a spirity sort of flavour to it so um if um, I mean, you, you know, we did the Innocent Gun last week, and obviously that's that's matured in in whiskey barrels. This this wasn't so much matured in whiskey barrels. It just obviously, as as it gone through its its process of brewing, had picked up all, all the different flavours from the different yeast. And um, so no, I wasn't I wasn't exactly bowled away by it. Um, but um, I've given it a go. It's it's another one another one to tick off the list. Um, but I've I've got to say, it wouldn't be one that I'd recommend in. In, or, or do again in a hurry. Well, that's a shame considering Adams is one of your favourite breweries. It, it is, yeah, but I, I do think it's the, the, the style of beer that it was is a bit of a departure for them. Um, 
so yeah, I think I think that's probably where most of my disappointment lies, but because I do have a lot of faith in the Edmunds Brewery and I do like a lot of their their, their different beers, and I, I guess I was just expecting something similar from this, but um, obviously not on on this occasion. That is a shame. Um, my assignment from last week was Bishop's Farewell from Oka Males. Now this is a beer that's been around nine or ten years or so. It's won various awards, won silver and bronze and golds from various national competitions, uh, usually in the premium bitter um, category. For me, I, I, I quite liked it. Um, it was, again, the nice, gentle, hoppy bitterness that I like, or that I'm, I'm coming to like in these beers. Uh, really smooth finish to it as well. It was really easy going, actually. Uh, only 46 ABV, which was after last week's Innocent Gun, was a nice <laughs> respite. And compared to your 10%, <laughs> no wonder yeah. it was easy going. Um, yeah, so I, I'm really glad that I chose that as my personal assignment. I don't have anything else to say about that. It's Brewed in Peterborough by Oakham Ales. So, um, yeah, that, that was a, a gift from my mate Andy. or And your mate Andy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, oh. a very easy going beer. I would definitely recommend that one. It should be available around your neck of the woods I would think but yeah yeah I think if it's if it's the same oakum that I'm now thinking of I was in um I was in a local Waitrose last week and they had quite a selection of oakum owls um but I don't remember seeing that one yeah so they do with Inferno which I've also got a bottle of and they've yeah. got one called Scarlet Macaw Citra JHC yes. yep yeah, that's the one I saw I saw the Citra in fact I think I've done the Citra in okay. in a pub um because Citra is quite a popular hop that's that's used in a lot of beers, um, so that that's why that name stands out to me, I guess. Ah, yeah, I think I'll check out some more of those if I see them. I mean, like I said, I've got the Inferno here, which is going to be one of my beers soonish. I don't want to leave it sitting there too long. No, <laughs> that might go off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else have you um, sampled this last week apart from that monstrosity? Of the ten percenter. Um, I I'm trying to remember the last week. I had a pint of um, going back to Adnams. I, I had their latest seasonal brew, um, Topaz Gold, um, which has been brewed with um, Australian hops. Um, I had a couple of pints of that on, on on Wednesday after work, and it was absolutely stunning. It was. Um, really hoppy really refreshing and that that's a little bit of a departure for Adnams because their beers aren't normally uh, they don't normally have that really strong hoppy taste yeah. but but this one this one did and I, I had a couple of pints of it as I say and it was it was absolutely gorgeous um and then I went out on on Friday night and I went to into the Euston Tap and to the Holborn Whippet and tried quite a few beers of which I now can't remember any of them. Um, oh, um, there, there was one called Urbane Gorilla, which I tried by Hewitt's, which was um, like a dark beer, very malty. Um, that, that, that would be a, a recommendation, I guess, if, if people were out um, and had a choice this week because it seemed to be that that seemed to be in a lot of the craft beer places so so it must be quite popular at the moment Urbane Gorilla by by um, Hewitt's okay and what else did you get through or oh, is that it uh, there, there were others uh, I, I <laughs> simply can't remember what they were if, if I'm completely <laughs> if, if I'm completely honest um no, they're not coming to me. This is where Untapped comes in handy. It, it is, yeah. <laughs> I probably could just look up back over that. Although I did stop st- stop Untapped and things um, earlier on in the evening because I just um, I, I just got carried away with, with, with chatting with the friends that I was out with and thought it was getting a bit unsociable to keep going back to my phone. So hang on a minute, I've just got to, <laughs> just got to check my beer in. <laughs> yeah, you can be a bit a beer nerd and a really beer nerd. Yeah. yeah, and then you can just be damn unsociable. <laughs> Which is me to a T, really. Um, <laughs> I had the weekend to myself this weekend. The wife was up visiting her parents all weekend. So I managed to get a few extra um, beers down me than I normally would. 
Uh, the first one was another badger beer called First Gold, uh, which they call a single English hop. That was roasted malts through and through. Really roasted malts. Um, not overwhelming or overpowering, but I mean, it was a malted roast. Mm. A roasted malt. <laughs> I can't, can't yeah. say I've had one. I, I can't, can't um, comment. I wouldn't have it again. I've, I've learned that um, the really roasted malt taste is not really to my palate. Mm. I don't really like it, which was a shame because the next beer I had was one that my boss gave me, which is um, called Dre Bells from Wadworth and Co. Okay. I don't know where they're, but I think they might be a Sussex. Is it, um, do they do the 6X Wadworth? I do not know, I'm afraid. It's, if they do 6S, they're more down um, Wiltshire way because we've got we've got friends down there and as we go to the friends, we drive through the town where the brewery is. Okay. So that, that wasn't just me being a nerd and <laughs> uh, knowing that there, there, was a, there, there was a little something to that story. They are in Wiltshire, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because my boss lives in... Um, Brighton, but he, he he likes all these little smaller breweries and stuff. He's a real real ale head. Um, but yeah, that was like I was saying about the badgers. This was malty, but that's all that it seemed to be. Just yeah. malts, um, slightly bitter, and not really much else to it, unfortunately. Which was a shame. But he keeps asking me if I drunk it yet, and now I can tell him that I have. <laughs> um, and then uh, and you spoke about it on the show. Yeah, I haven't told him about this show. I'm not sure if I will. I'll, yeah. wait, I'll wait until I change jobs. <laughs> yeah, probably a good show, actually. Yeah, and then last night I um, had this... It's basically like a South American-style lager, I suppose, um, that I've had for ages, and I just thought I should get rid of it. It's called Soul. Oh, yeah, yeah. Made by Heineken, I think. Yeah, it's horrible um, stuff. It's not bad. Is, is that the, is that the stuff that yeah that you're supposed to have a lime in to make it taste better? No, I think that's another one. I couldn't remember the name of that one. Right. But maybe you did have a piece of lime in this. It was okay. It was you know it was drinkable. It was like a strong Peroni to me. Yeah. Um. You know, it's a it's a drinking beer. You know, you don't really think not one that you would think about and go. Yeah, you can definitely taste the piss in this. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my right. weekend summed up and. Yeah, so that's so one thing I've learned is the really strong roasted malt flavours in beers. I haven't got the taste for that yet. But that that's good because it, it means you're beginning to find kind of the style of beer that you like. Mm. So, so so the next step will be, if, if you're not doing it already, I imagine when you go into a su- supermarket, you're actually, you'll actually start reading the labels. Yeah. So it's trying to get an idea of the sort of ingredients that's in there. So you start leaning towards the beers that you favour rather than just going for a selection because they're on the shelves. Yeah, I am very much attracted to the labels still. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Especially if it looks like... <laughs> Forget everything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> but I am reading the labels. Yeah. Um, but I, I am still very... Oh, I haven't seen that label before. I'll collect that one. And I'll put that on my I have drunk it list. Excellent. But um, I'm also looking at the numbers. Because my wife tweeted to us on the weekend when I was saying about the 7.5% in gun last week. And how it was a bit strong for me. And she said, well, first she called me a pussy. And then she said, if she drunk beer, the number would be the first thing she'd look for. And the higher, the better. Um, my wife, ladies and gentlemen. She, <laughs> she's a whiskey so. drinker. She likes the high numbers. <laughs> so let's go on to this week's featured beer from Badger. Like I said, it's called Tanglefoot. It is a 5% ABV. The little... Tasting chart on the back. What did we? What did you tell Cyclops. Me? The Cyclops chart. Yeah. Uh, says it's light amber copper, which we can tell by looking at the bottle. It smells fruity, scented hop and cereal, and tastes crisp, sweet, spicy overtones. We'll soon find out for ourselves if we can find out any of that. So, you ready to go, mate? I do. I do love it that the label also says, and and this is one of the things that particularly attracts me to beers. Ideal for steak and owl pies. <laughs> so any beer that has been recommended to match with a pie is a winner for me. 
because I do like a pie. Don't we all? Yes, indeed. Um, not quite sure how that fits in with the show. It's, it's the beer and pop show, not the beer and pie pop show. <laughs> well, that is a very pretty light copper colour. Yes. Yeah, almost, um, yeah, light orange, almost. Yeah. Not much bubbles coming in it, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. Mm. Small head on it. I've I've managed to get quite a good, quite a decent head on mine that has um, lasted as I've been drinking because I've I've kind of been supping since since we begun. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm quite a way down, but the head seems to have lasted with it, oh. which is which is quite nice actually. I, I, I quite like that. Um, to have a little bit of that when when you go down. Hmm, this is nice. Yeah, it is. It is it very is, nice. It is very crisp, isn't it? It doesn't yeah. mention on the bottle it's going to be crisp. Yeah. Yeah. Quite I, light. The, the first thing that that hit me when I um the, the, the first sort of like waft of the the, the, the 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 aroma that I got, literally first thing that went through in my mind was toast. And I don't know why, but it, it I, I just got a, a smell like toast, um, and and then kind of as I've drunk it, it <laughs> thankfully doesn't taste like toast, um, but it's it's quite malty this one, so yeah, it's got that malty top to it. Yeah. Yeah, and quite a spicy hop as well. But not too strong. No, no. Just a easy, easy hop. Um, not, not too much left on the tongue after. Yep. Just a, a nice, easy drinking beer. This one. Now, this is the thing I'm finding from Badgers, mate. Is um consistently good. Consistently good. <laughs> <laughs> a nice variety of of um taste on there, but they're all quite easy to go down. Yeah. I think this is their kind of flagship beer. Okay. This one, the Tangle Foot. Yeah, I think I've seen this in pubs and stuff. Yeah, I think I think this this more than the Thirsty Ferret. Um, but but yeah, this this would be the one o- over all, all the others. Like you say, you know, if you was going to see it in a pub, this would be the one that you probably see first yeah. of all. Now my favourite is still the Golden Glory, the Peach one. Yeah, you're loving that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get myself some more of that. Um, but I've got some different um, badges because, like I said, I bought uh, one of those country sets, as they call it, the, yeah. the other week. So I've got a few bottles to get through. I, w- I was tempted to buy one of them um, be- because I, I, I saw I saw one last week. But then I was I was I was put off by the the, the one in there um, that that you said is it the, the the one that I've only ever seen in that box, the England's yeah. something or, or other. I, I think you mentioned that it. it had elderflower or, 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 or a hint of elderflower in it, and and that just put me off. Did I? Uh, yeah. Let me go look at my pub shelf. <laughs> clink, clink. England's owned it. In- yeah. Um, yeah. Taste of elderflower and white grape. Yeah, see, that just puts me off straight away. I'm not not sure why. See, I, I don't even know what older flower tastes like. No, it smells like. If if I'm honest, neither do I because I've, I've never drunk it. <laughs> but I don't imagine it tastes nice. I imagine it to taste like a bramble bush or, or something. Yeah, I, I put. Do you remember when we first started? I told you about that gift box of beers I bought up in Scotland. Yes. That I yeah. Got, got for our mate Andy, but I also got um, one for myself. Um, I gave half of them to my boss, and I kept half of them back and one of those is an elderflower beer so I've put them in the fridge I'm going to see if I can um, have a sneaky one this weekend so I'll have to be put back on that once I figure out what elderflower tastes like yeah but th- th- there's a um, just talking about not knowing what the tastes are there's this um, wine expert in the states called Gary Vaynerchuk who is very famous online for doing online videos and he runs a, a huge wine distributor slash shop um, but he had a video of how to develop your palate mm. and it basically had a big table full of different types of fruit veggies, all different things, dirt 
dirty socks and he was tasting them all. No, thinking, I'm, no. I'm not going to go quite that far, but I need to <laughs> expand my palate. Like, please, now. really. Yeah. <laughs> There's no need. But, you know, he's, he's one of these wine experts that can taste all the subtleties in wine that people yeah. won't necessarily taste. I mean, I think half of it's bullshit myself. <laughs> but, I mean, if you can taste the hints of crisp apple in the in a beer like this, then, you know, more power to you. But <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy just to get uh, uh, um, a few little tastes and I'm, I'm, I'm happy if that flavour changes throughout the beer as well. Yeah. What do you think about last last week's Innocent Gun? While we were recording, we, we suddenly realised at the beginning we were saying we can't taste the fruit. And then while we're drinking it, we're going, oh, hang on, we've got the rum and raisin coming through or we've got the such and such coming through. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not entirely stupid, but it takes a time. No, no, it, it does take the time. Um, but you know, like I say, as long as, as long as you're picking up something, you don't need to pick up every inch to see of it. No. Um, but, but Badger do. I, I think Badger quite like using um, ingredients from the country because they do um, in association with you know the River Cottage, um, Hugh Fernley Whittenstall. Um, that the chef on Channel Four, that they do, they brew a beer with him called Stinger, which has actually got nettles. It's brewed with with nettles in it as well. All right. And if, if you can get out hold of it, it's it's quite an interesting beer to drink because it's it's quite again quite crisp, crisp and refreshing, tingling aftertaste in your mouth, which which can only be from the nettles. Um, but it's a truly, um, it's, it's a truly amazing beer, actually. Stun silence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how I, how I feel there. Not, not sure how you feel about drinking a, well, I, th- to be fair, so, someone gave me a couple of bottles and I was like, but it's got nettles in it. <laughs> but I don't know if I want that in my mouth. Um, but it was all right, actually. It was, it was a good beer. So yeah, so this is definitely drinkable, but is there anything special about it? See, I don't think there is. Um, I, I think, as I say, one of the first things I got from it was, oh, smells like toast. But, yeah. but when that went away, I was then like, well, hang on a minute. It's got a, it's got a aroma and a colour and a look, and we've been here before. We've we've been here with the waggle dance. We've been here with the old golden hen. It it kind of sits in there, really. It's a it's a decent beer, but would you want to drink it over and over again? It's drinkable enough that it's would make a good session beer. I don't think it's got the taste to want to sit on it all night. No, I I don't think I could. I don't think I could do more than two of these. Yeah. Before I'd I'd want to move on to something else. I'd want some more taste. From. Yeah, I mean, I often find um, once that initial tasting has passed and I've gotten used to the impact of the flavours, what remains then is what marks the quality of the beer. Yeah. For me. So. Um, like last week's one, that really boozy, cherry fruity taste lasted all the way through. And the Golden Glory is the nice crisp peachiness all the way through. But after this, once you get past the easy hops and the light malt on top, there's nothing there. It's it's just beer, isn't it? Yeah, just beer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it's that's, that's all you're left with. But... Maybe that's all it needs to be if it's a popular um, pub. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I only had this for the first time a few months ago. Um, and I, I actually found, I, I had it on quite a warm day, and it's actually quite a refreshing pint. Um, and it is a good pint that goes with dinner as, yeah. as well. Um, so it's, it's there's 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 the recommendation for this week's folks. If you want a want a good pint to go with dinner, this this would probably work with quite a few meals. Yeah, I mean, like you say in the bottle, they recommend it with steak and ale pie. I can imagine, you know, a nice 
gravy rich pie with oh, buttery pastry that. and this there isn't enough taste in it for it to overpower what you're eating but there would it be would enough there to, com- to complement yeah. it yeah absolutely i think i think you're bang on there i think that's that's what it is it's it's a pie beer yep <laughs> hooray for the pie beer brilliant one beer so, needs to be a pie beer We'll see what the uh, what, what the guys at Badger think of our review of that. <laughs> <laughs> only buy this if you're eating pie. Yeah, love to be a chaps, but we'll, we'll only work with a pie. Yeah. Well, next time I go to a pub that serves um, steak and ale pie, I'll, I'll order it if they have Tanglefoot on tap. <laughs> and only if. Yeah, and I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, I don't have much more to say about it. Well, yeah. Right? I mean, it's gone down easy enough. I've got maybe a third of the bottle left. Once again, Steve, I've got to stop drinking these so quickly. This is a 5% as well. Yeah. Is, is it? So again, it's, it's a little more than you're used to. Not not quite up there with the, the 7.5 that we did last week, but um, it's not one that you wanna, you'd want to be guzzling down. No... Two and a half UK units. So you technically, you should only drink one and a half of these a day. <laughs> Kids, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> only drink one and a half badges a day. Okay, this that has hints of melon. I I call hints of melon and pear. I, I call rubbish on that. I can't smell any melon and pear. Although it, it does have a quite fresh nose to it. Yeah. Is I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing with the the, the taste, um, the, the recommendations on the back that it's crisp, sweet, spicy overtone. Yes, definitely. All, all that's there, um, and and then you've got this this sort of graph thing that that tells you how bitter and sweet and hoppy and malty and fruity it is. Now it's 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 given it quite a low malty rating, and and quite a high sweet and fruity rating. Yeah, um, I would have actually said it was more malty than than, than it's suggest, suggesting on there. Yeah, it's not as bitter as it says it's going to be. More malty. It's definitely hoppy. The fruitiness. I mean, I would put all these marks at kind of midway with the malty, probably a bit higher mm. than the bitter. I would think. It's, it's it's hoppy as you drink it, so you can taste it immediately. But the the hoppy. That that bitter hoppy aftertaste is gone, almost immediately. Yeah. Um, and I, I suppose personally, I'm favouring beers at the moment where that hoppiness lasts just a little bit longer, mm-hmm. and it's just a little bit stronger. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I mentioned earlier on that the, the, the Adnams Topaz Gold. Well, the, the couple of pints I had of that were about five o'clock, and I remember a cheeky little belch at about 11 o'clock that night and I was still getting the hops. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, mm, yeah, that was a good bit. <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. It's, it's all about what you get on the belch. It's, that's, that's what it's about. That's, that, that was the mark of the beer. <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you that in the tasting guides. No, they don't. It's, it's, all, it's, it's all, like I say, it's all about what you get through on the belch. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm about done with this one. That is a shame, but, you know, we can. I can tell, I can say that I've tasted one of the standards. Yeah. But uh, you, you're favouring your badges at the moment anyway, aren't you? So. Well, I have to because I've got so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a reason for that, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, that one I had on the weekend, the... um. Or was it the first gold? Yeah, that that was okay. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have another one of those. So, um, but saying again, the golden glory. You know, I could drink that all night. Yeah. So I've got a few others that I need to get through um, in due course. So I think that about wraps up this week's review of Tanglefoot by Badger. What, how would you rate this out of? Let's rate it out of five. Um. I would give it a three. I think it's a middle of the road beer. Yeah, I'd give it two and a half, three. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a bad beer. I, I, I must admit, I'm I'm tending to lean towards my, the ratings that I give on Untapped, and if if there's one downside to Untapped, it's that you can't give it a half point. 
you, you, you have to be bang on. Um, and I found that with many beers that I've wanted to rate on there. But I, I would have this at a three, I, I think. Although if it did half points, probably would think about two and a half, three. <laughs> okay. So moving on, we have weekly assignments picked for next week. I have mine picked. I'm not sure if Stephen has his picked. It no, is I've got one picked out. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, because I'm going to say it's your birthday this week. Happy birthday, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, he has a month-long celebration, as do we all, for <laughs> Stephen's birthday. Um, so you will no doubt be tasting a variety of beers this week. And I in guess. Coming weeks. But what one have you selected especially for Beer Clock Shoe? I am going with one that, that currently features in the Sainsbury's Great British Beer Hunt. Um, it's by Williams Brothers Brewing Co. And it's called Prodigal Son. Oh, um, sounds interesting. Yeah, the, the, the description is a delicate, fruity and aromatic blonde beer enjoy with fish and chips. Oh, that sounds nice. So I'm, I'm going to give that a go, and I think I'm actually going to have that on my birthday as, as well. So, um... I look forward to that check-in, mate. <laughs> I've, had, so, I've, had a, I've had a couple of blonde beers before, way back when I first tried to get into beers, and I quite like them. They're quite strong, but they were European ones. Mm. Well, w Williams Brothers do um, a fantastic one, which is it's called Caesar Augustus, and it's it's a lager IPA hybrid. Um, so it's for all intents and purposes, it's a lager, but with a beer taste. Oh, it's right. an amazing. It's an absolute amazing beer, and and if you ever see that on the shelves in your local Sainsbury's, get a bottle. Um, because it is a fantastic beer. Mm. My selection is from the Wolf Brewery up in Norfolk. Ah, oh, yeah. Pronounce it Norfolk or Norfolk? Norfolk. Norfolk. Okay. <laughs> not Norfolk. Norfolk. Unless, unless you're from up there, I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to start offending <laughs> the carrot crunches. So <laughs> <laughs> the beer is called Prairie Gold. Uh, it's a golden ale with a crisp citrus finish. 5% ABV. Sounds lovely. Brewed with American hops. Ooh, you should get a nice um you should get a nice hoppy taste out of that then. Yeah, Maybe I'm looking forward to it. This is one of the randoms I bought in Sainsbury's up in Bury St Edmunds a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned just before about the Great British Beer Hunt at Sainsbury's. Yes. Um, they seem to be putting out quite... Um, a good selection except yes, at the yeah. Bellum Sainsbury's that I go to <laughs> get your act together lads putting a few extra variations of Fuller's beers on the shelf does not count as a great British beer, <laughs> British beer hunt <laughs> so get your act together I want to have something interesting other than John Adams or whatever it's called um, Fuller's it? Badgers and direct Directors is not as fancy as you can get well, would it upset you to know that, that they do actually do, as, as part of this Great British Beer Hunt, there are 20 beers available? Yeah, I've, I've seen the list. Yeah. I don't um, think I'll ever see them. No, I, 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 I was in there last week and I pretty much cleared the shelf. How, uh, long, how long is this going on for, this British Beer Hunt? Um, I've got a piece of paper here. Uh, they, it's going on until the 2nd of October. So still, still a few weeks left yet. Okay, because uh, not this coming Sunday, the Sunday after we're going up up to your way. Oh, right, yeah. So we'll pop into Berry St. Edmunds again, and hopefully the Sainsbury's there is part of the whole deal, unlike the Ballum Sainsbury's. <laughs> <sighs> Grudge. That, yeah, Sainsbury's should feel themselves suitably <laughs> chastised <laughs> now. <sighs> They're missing out on my £6 purchase they would no doubt have made. Oh, uh, what was it? Three for four quid. So you can you can kind of get three for four quid. So I I went nuts when I was in there. <laughs> um, came home with about twenty four bottles, um, which are, are now stored in various locations all over the house because I don't have the benefit of having a beer shelf. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some in the garden. There's some in 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 what is my office. There's some in the fridge. There's some on top of the fridge. They're everywhere. Yeah, I, I do plan on having the car clinking on the on the drive home after. Yeah. The next drive up there. Yeah, well, mine was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, that's the end of another Beer O'Clock show. Thanks very much for joining us. Happy birthday to Stephen for this week. Happy 40th, mate. I hope you have a great one. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be talking to you next week where we will be reviewing Innocent Gun Original, going back to the roots. Yeah, looking we, forward to that yeah, one. We also have a lot of Innocent Gun to get through. <laughs> yeah. So we're looking forward to that. We've got our personal assignments this week. Steve's going to have many other personal assignments that he has no obligation to tell us about next week. I'll try and keep track of the best ones <laughs> and, and, and report back. Jolly good. You can see us on Twitter at Beer O'Clock Show. You can reach us online on... Well, not that Twitter is not online. But you can get us on the web at beeroclockshow.co.uk or email us beeroclockshow at gmail.com. Drop us a line. We love getting your feedback. We've had some good feedback over the last couple of episodes and we'd like to hear more. If you're a brewery who wants to get the word out about your beers, you don't need to send us free beer, but we do appreciate free beer. Uh, feel free to drop us a line. Uh, we're happy to help promote the smaller breweries especially and independent pubs as well anything like that get in touch we'd love to hear from you till next week thanks very much Stephen. happy birthday thank you see you next week cheerio bye bye